Welcome to a special Easter episode of the Simply Jesus podcast. This week we are celebrating Jesus, and I wanted to make sure that you knew who Jesus was. He is Lord of my life, and I just wanted to share how um, vast and how big Jesus and the Lord can be. So I've invited a special guest. She is a friend and a fitness instructor, but most importantly, she knows Jesus. And so I want to introduce you to Shalee Sanchez. It's very good to be here. Yes, I'm excited welcome. about just talking about Jesus oh, and who good. he is. Yes. And thank you for inviting me. Yes. Well, you were the first person that came to mind when I thought about um, really knowing Jesus and knowing the depth of him because, you know, we can know him in so many different ways. And I think over our lives, um, at times he could be a friend and, and at a different time he's a comforter and he's your strength. And so um, I know that you also have experienced all the beautiful, maybe not all of them, but I mean, a good portion of who Jesus is. So um, I'll just start with you and ask you, um, who is Jesus to you? That is a loaded, yes. like, <laughs> the answer to that question is really loaded because as you already mentioned, there are so many ways that Jesus is a part of our lives. Right. And that has changed throughout my life. And so the ways that I can relate to him now definitely were not ways I could relate to him 20 years ago. And so... As I was just thinking about that question and thinking about who is Jesus to me, first of all, I was thinking, okay, he is my savior. Like that is the essence of who a person is, like right. who their character is, um, the qualities that they are, the identity um, is often just expressed in their name. And when I think oh, about yes. the name of Jesus, that's what his name means. Right. The Lord saves. And so that's one of the first things that comes to mind is he is my savior. And I think back to, you know, when I was a teenager, I was 13, and that was when I really understood, I think, the, for the first time, that Jesus was saving me from the darkness he is the light and so he was bringing me into his light and so right. he was saving me from that but now him being my savior means even more it's mm -hmm. it's significant because he didn't just bring me out of the darkness but now he saves me every single day wow. every single day i experience him as my savior because he saves me out of destructive mindsets he saves me out of patterns of behavior yes. that would lead to a life that I don't want to have. Right. Um, he leads me into a life that is abundant. So he saves me out of all of these uh, detours or ways that I could choose to go. And he's saving me from things and out of things that would really hinder me experiencing the fullness of who he is. Yeah. And so being my savior is something that even is continuing to be at a deeper level of understanding for me wow. um, as I continue to, to walk with him and see how that actually impacts my life that he's my savior. Wow, I love that. I haven't really thought about, like, because I think we, we, as first, our Savior, that He died, He is the Son of God. He died for our sins, and He was resurrected from the Lord. And so um, we have salvation because of Jesus. Right. But you're right that, that even today, He saves me from maybe just the chaos that's around me. He teaches me that I can step out of that chaos and walk in His peace. So he yes. is saving me from um, everything that's around us, you know? And I think especially today when the world can be kind of chaotic and crazy and unstable, and yet he's even saving us that way, that we get to step back into his arms or into his word, into his peace and just go, okay, God, why don't you tell me what's going on? Why don't you show me? Um, what is happening the, or how you want me to act in these situations. Absolutely. Yeah. And what you were describing, it can be on a global sense of the chaos that we experience, but it can also be an internal 
battle that we face. Yes. Um, and he shows us a way out of that. He yeah. gives us an escape. Right. Um, through the peace that he gives us. Wow. I really like that. Um, when I was thinking of who Jesus is to me, I was also thinking, and maybe this is kind of similar, which I feel like it all kind of um, ebbs and flows, you know, with the character of God, but just how sovereign he is, you know, he is, he is sovereign over all things. And I think I really need that security when my life changes quickly or um, there's things I can't control. I need to know that he's in control. I need to know that he has a plan. And um, I think right now that's where I'm really leaning into the Lord is because I'm kind of resting on, I don't have to have everything figured out. Right. I mean, I, I want to. And, and I feel like other people want me to, but right. I just don't. And so I have to trust that my God sees me, my God has a plan, my God knows me, and um, I trust in His sovereignty. I know that He loves me, mm-hmm. and so I really trust wherever He's leading me. I mean, even like this podcast, right? I'm, I stepped out because He asked me to do it, and I don't know where it's going or exactly what's happening, but we just trust Him because He is so sovereign and to me, that has got to be one of the most comforting things about the Lord is just that sovereignty. It's so comforting what you're talking about right now, and I can totally relate to it as well, in knowing that He gives me stability, that He holds me together. I mean, that's what it says in His Word, that He created all of this, all of us. He created everything in this world and there's order to all of it and he holds it all together and that's what he provides for us is this stability of knowing that you know we can see the consistency of orbiting around the sun and knowing that we will see the sun the next morning yes even if there's clouds in the sky we know it's there and and that is the consistency of his presence in our lives. Right. That is the kind of the the just grounding that we have when we know he is there, regardless of all the circumstances and everything that is fluctuating and changing and um, whatever it is around us that might be some loss that we're experiencing or um, some change that we're going through. And he remains constant through all of that. Yeah, that's so good. I was even thinking that, um, again, there's so many different ways that the Lord meets us. But I remember a season um, that I was reading a lot of the Old Testament, and I was just seeing God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And so because I was in a period of waiting, I really needed to see God's faithfulness. And Mm -hmm. there were so many stories, especially in the Old Testament, where people were waiting for something, that they were stepped out in faith and they were waiting. And um, so to me, the word is another way that if people haven't personally experienced something like that with the Lord, that they could, that Old Testament is a good place for those type of stories. You know, Mm -hmm. that the word has more of God's character. Um, And if you're thinking, well, I don't have a personal experience like that, you know, the word is another place that you can dive into to learn more about who God is. And I believe too, that as we just ask God, like, Lord, why don't you show me who you are to me right now? I mean, you could ask the Lord that, you know, just say, God, I I know you're here and I believe in you, but maybe he's doing a lot behind the scenes that we don't know. And I I would just challenge our listeners to um, just to ask him, say, where are you moving that I can't see? Or who do you, how do you want to show up for me right now? Maybe there's something that is stressing us out that the Lord's like, you know what? I really want to take that from you. Let me be your, hold that burden for you. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe it's something else. Right. As I think about who Jesus is for me, mm-hmm. that's different than who Jesus is. Because... Who Jesus is, is determined by his essence. Right. But who he is for me is determined by my response to his invitation. Yes. And so as you were talking about, you know, when we make the decision to say, Jesus, I I think that you're there. Um, 
I am in a place where I have a lot of doubts and I don't even know like what is happening right now, but is there something that you want to tell me? Is there something that you want um, to do in my life right now? And he is eager to engage with us. Yes. He is wanting to, but he's not ever going to be forceful and he's not going to pressure us in a way that is um, harsh because Jesus is gentle. Yes. Jesus is so gentle in the way that he relates to us. And just when he invites us, that gives us an opportunity. But who he is for us is determined by how we decide to respond. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think about that because I was kind of mixing them as we were talking. But um, you're right. So in the past season, I've really felt like I've known Jesus as my friend. But it's because I was in a very lonely place and I felt very isolated. Mm -hmm. And I really... I needed something and I, I reached out to Jesus. So I was being active and kind of inviting him into that loneliness right. to say, I don't know what else to do. This, what I'm doing is not working and I am feeling lonely and I am feeling, um, I know I said isolated, but you know, you can tell when you're just getting into a bad place mm -hmm. and you're kind of losing who you are. Right. And so I think at that point I, and mostly I feel like maybe because I didn't have any other options, but I did. I reached out to Jesus and said, I need you. Like, I need you to show up. I need you to be more real to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, this probably sounds a little crazy, but I literally just started imagining him sitting next to me. I mean, that's I was really lonely, um, but I needed comfort. Right. And I think I had watched one of the shows on television it, I mean it wasn't the chosen because that was this was a while back but one of the Bible stories where I could see kind of Jesus on his screen so he's becoming a little more real to me mm -hmm. and I just thought I've got to invite him in and mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. and I remember just sitting with him and talking to him and it and it be, it felt better because I could feel his presence and I didn't fully understand it mm -hmm. but I just knew I wasn't alone anymore right. you know and in the end um he really showed up as my friend. And I don't know that I ever realized he could do that. I think maybe as a child, they were like, Jesus is your friend, but what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. But he really did show up as a friend and a companion. I am so glad that you brought up that point of that Jesus is everything that we need. And uh, so in different moments of our right. life, whatever it is that we're needing, and so whatever it is that you're needing, like you can engage with Jesus in that way. And yeah. He is everything for us. Yeah. And so when, when I have really been in some just experiencing emotional abuse mm -hmm. and needing a place that I could feel refuge and comfort right. um, and feeling very isolated and alone. Mm -hmm. I experienced in that Jesus as a close friend, like the kind of close friend who, if I arrive late at the restaurant, like they've already ordered my drink because they know what wow. I like, yes, you know? Yes, yes. Um, or they can sense that I'm about to say something before I ever even yes. open my mouth. And so they're yeah. already like looking at me like, what do you, I'm listening, you know, right. that kind of a close friend that really gets you, that really mm -hmm. understands you, that really knows what it is that is going to help you where you're at. Right. And so one of the ways that as my friend, I wouldn't have ever expected Jesus to really help me was um, during this time, one of the ways that was so therapeutic was to be able to go outside and go on runs. Right. And that he would just talk to me on those mm -hmm. runs and affirm me and encourage me and remind me of his faithfulness and just say, hey, look up at the sky. Look how immense it is. Look how wow. just beautiful it is and see how amazing I am. And I mean, there would be mornings that I just 
was like, I can't do this anymore. I just want to yes. quit. And he would be like, hey, let's just go on a run together. Like like a friend would, you know? Right. Um, and, and it was just this very tangible experience of, hey, he's like really serious. He's like wanting to have this time with me wow. as a friend where we can just talk and, yeah. and get into a better place, into a better mindset, into... Um, being able to experience his goodness right. and remember his faithfulness. Wow. And so he knows us. Yeah. Like, you know, you may not ever want to go on a run with Jesus, and that's okay. <laughs> but that was what really got me out of, you know, the places that I was in and I needed to get out of. And and he knows us individually. He knows us personally. And he knows the things that are going to help us move forward and wow. and be able to really experience the abundant life that right. he wants us to enjoy. Oh, that's so good. I love that he can be so personal. I think, too, I sometimes I forget um, that Jesus became a man and he walked on this earth. So he does know more than we realize how we feel. Right. He knows what it's to be lonely. He knows what it is for people to betray him. Like he knows your hurt because he was here and right. he had that hurt. I right. mean, he didn't have this really great life on earth and he suffered a lot. And so he he knows you more than you realize. And I think sometimes I forget that too. That um, And it's almost like I forget it, but I hear myself telling my son, you know, it's like, well, Jesus understands your sadness because he was sad. And so I need to remember that also for me. But he truly, um, he walked on the earth, you know, and he knew, he went through all the emotions we did. And so he does know exactly what you need and when you need to get outside and when you need to be encouraged, you know, or maybe when you just need a friend just to sit with you so you're not alone. You right. Know? And I've experienced those moments with him when I just needed to cry and, and he, I just felt like he was just sitting beside me. I can visualize it, me sitting on the floor in my house and just experiencing him putting his arms around me and holding me while I'm there crying. Yes. And he did experience humanity and he knows what it's like to be in a physical body and to have all of these experiences emotionally. And there's not only a connection with our suffering that he's able to be able to help us through, but also he knows what brings us joy. Oh, and one of his point. promises to us is that he'll make our joy complete. Yes. And so he knows what it is going to be like for us to, even in our trials, and this is what is so cool to me, is that even when we walk through the most difficult moments of our lives, even when we're in the hardest places, we can still experience joy with Him yes. in those moments. Like He infuses the journey as hard as it can be. He infuses the journey with His presence, and His presence brings joy. Oh. And it lifts the burden. It makes it where it's not so heavy that it, you know, kills us. Right. <laughs> um, but, but he makes our burden light. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And I, so I'd want to make sure that our listeners, that you know that Jesus loved you, that he is the son of the living God, that he died on a cross so that your sins could be forgiven and that he was resurrected in three days um, and defeated death. He defe defeated sin, Satan. He defeats everything. There's all power in the name of Jesus. And he did that for you. And so he does know you. He knows what you're doing right now and what you need. So I just want to encourage you to um, ask him, where are you right now? Or ask him, um, how can I experience you more? Because I think sometimes we want more of Jesus, but we're not sure how. Mm -hmm. But I would ask. I would ask others to pray for you. Um, do something, especially as Easter's coming up. You know, go to a new church or put in a prayer request or talk to a friend, but ask Jesus, how 
um, can I know you more? Like reveal yourself to me in a new way. So I just want to bless you with that. I believe the Lord's going to encounter you. So I just bless you with new dreams of Jesus, with encounters of Jesus where you can feel him physically just holding you and touching you and letting you know you're not alone. And we just bless you also with the joy that that Jesus has for you Mm -hmm. um, because he loves you so deeply. So we just, um, we hope and we pray that this blesses you.